In this tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how we can create and customize contour plots inside matplotlib. Now, contour plots are a very interesting type of graph. They aren't your regular 2D graph because the interesting thing about them is that they are used to represent 3D data in the form of a 2D graph. So where are contour plots used? Well, one very common example, and which I'll, I'll also be using in this tutorial, is topography. Mountains, hills, gorges, you know, gorges and troughs, you know, the area where the elevation is lower. So all of these areas, when we want to represent this in a map, like a 2D map, then we use contour lines, contour plots. Okay, same thing, contour lines, contour plots. Okay, so you may have noticed this before. There's a map and there are lots of circles on it, nested circles with lots of rings and stuff. That's contour plots. Okay, you may or may not have seen that. Don't worry, I'm going to show you guys all this in today's video. So let's begin. Ignore this function. Ignore it for now. Okay, and we'll come back to it later. I'm going to use some of NumPy's functions to generate some data for us here. 0 to 5, and then I'm going to generate 50 values. 50 values from 0 to 5. They're going to be equally spaced. Okay, we'll need this data. So I'm going to do lin space and do this for the y axis as well, 0 to 5, then generate 50 values. Okay, now I need to use the np.meshgrid function. Okay, what this does, what meshgrid does, is generates a grid of data. Now these are two, these are two, you know, 1D arrays. Okay, they're simple 1D arrays. And what I want to do is actually create a grid out of them. And just to help you guys understand this concept, I'm going to reduce the uh, size and then I'm going to print them out to help you guys understand what's really going on here. Because I know this can be a little confusing. Okay, so this is the current situation. We have five values ranging from zero to five. Okay, in our X and Y variables. Once I put this through the mesh grid, okay, look what we end up with. I'll just remove this print statement now. Once we put this through mesh grid, we end up with a grid instead of a single, uh, hold on, I can't scroll. Okay, so instead of a simple 1D array, we end up with 2D arrays, okay? And this is something important. All right, this is the first one and this, is the second one okay so this is actually kind of important if you want if you want to look more at this function later you can but just know that it's used very often in 3d plots okay as well as the contour plot so yeah we're generating a grid of data here now what i'm going to do is use the uh, function that i defined up here to generate the third variable because 3d data has three variables right it has x y and z and i'm gonna use the function here to generate some random data for myself okay uh, just bear in mind here that i'm doing all of this nonsense just because i want some data which we can use in our contra plot if you guys already have some data beforehand that's great okay you can you can use that i'm just doing this because i need three variables i need x i need y and i need z Okay, and I don't have that data with me, so I'm just using NumPy to generate that data for myself. Okay, so this, this is just the data generation technique. We now have our three variables, and now we're going to plot them on our contour plot. So I'll create my figure and axis object first, plt.subplots. Okay, then I'm going to do axis.contour, and then I'm going to pass in x, y, and z. And let's run this. Uh, oh, sorry, plt.show. Okay, and I'll just remove that print statement. We don't need that. And there we go. Huh, that looks a bit different from what I remember. Oh, okay. Uh, let me just increase the sizes back to 50. Otherwise, it looks very... Yeah, this is what it actually looks like. It's more higher resolution now, basically. Okay, so this is our data. Okay, and now I know this doesn't make much sense 
because it, it doesn't really look good in, it, in its default format. So I'm going to show you guys how we can customize this to make it reveal its data, to reveal its meaning a lot easier. Okay. So I'm going to make a color bar. Uh, is it plt.colorbar? Huh. All right, hold on. I think that only works with the contour F function. We'll take a look at that. Okay, so what we need to do is change this from axis to plt. That way we can get the color bar working. Okay, so if I just do this, we can now get our graph here with the color bar. Let me teach you guys how to read it. So here we have our values and you can see a color bar next to each one of these values. They're blue at the bottom and then they turn green in the middle, then they become a bit yellowish at the top. So if we look at our graph now, we can understand what this means. Basically the areas with blue, the, ring, the blue rings, those are the low elevation areas. The green ones are roughly medium and the yellow ones are the high elevation areas. And that's basically how we're representing three dimensions. We can see two dimensions here in the X and the Y axis. And the third dimension is being represented through colors. Okay. Higher Z values give us a more yellowish color and lower Z values give us a blue color. That's basically how we're representing it. Now let me show you more interesting and better ways of doing this. Okay. One thing that we can do is change the color over here to black. Uh, wrong parameter, I think. Colors. All right, there we go. So this changes the colors to black, okay? And we don't need the color bar here because um, it's all black, but this is a good way of quickly identifying all the low elevation areas because what matplotlib does when you turn the colors to black is that it makes all the low elevation areas dotted. So we can, we can quickly identify that there are three low elevation areas over here. One, two, and three. Okay, cool. This is just a very handy trick to quickly identify a few uh, low elevation areas. Now let's move to the contour F function. This is the uh, function I, that, that I personally prefer. Okay, not sure what it stands for, but it's useful much better. And over here, we can define custom color maps. Let me just run the code once. Okay, so this is what we get. And you can already see that the color bar is a lot more descriptive. We can see that the colors change from blue to green to yellow here a lot easier. Okay. And the color bar, sorry, the contour bar, the contour graph, as well as the color bar, both of them are filled. Okay. Which is what the F in the contour F stands for, I think. Fill. Okay, so let's define a custom color map. I'm going to use red and green. Okay, RD is short for red, GY is short for green, and this will give us a red to green, sorry, uh, GY is for gray, okay, GR is for green. So what I just did is defined a red gray color map. Now we can see this a lot better now. Right, we can quickly identify the lowest elevation areas. You know, this deep red over here, this deep red over here. This is also uh, quite red. All right, then the highest area is gray. Okay, which is this area over here. And yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty descriptive. We can quickly understand which areas are which and the degree as well. Because, you know, like there's low elevation, then there's high elevation, but there's also the stuff in between, right? So this hel actually helps us, helps us a lot. So we can also reverse this, make this from gray to red. Oh, wait, we can't. Oh, uh, one thing that we can do here is just, uh, there's this whole list over here. So uh, let's just pick this autumn R. I've used this one before on heat maps. It's... Uh, Okay, yeah, I think it's better if we, if we keep that to heat maps. It's not a good idea on, you know, let's, let's try blue to purple. Okay, and now if I use this, we get a very nice graph. Okay, that, that looks nice. So yeah, this is just color maps. This is how you, you use color maps and you can basically change the way the colors show. 
okay and this is very nice and you know the way it shows up using a good color scheme is important the one that actually makes sense okay and one that one that you can quickly identify the appropriate colors okay cool so i think we've talked enough about color maps let's talk about how we can customize this a bit the customizations for this are actually a bit complicated so i don't want to discuss them in detail uh, i mean there aren't any obvious customizations but one thing that we can do is change the alpha value okay so we can like reduce the transparency a bit okay let me just tone that down a bit further just so we can see a big effect hmm. it gives it an interesting look okay you can consider using that all right other than this we have the line style parameter uh line style why is it showing up like that is this wrong line uh hmm, weird okay so apparently this only works on the contour function apparently they do have different parameters okay who knew so line styles over here we can do dotted or sorry dashed and what this will do is give us dashed lines okay and yeah now the default is solid okay which gives us our default look over here let's try a different one so let's try dotted i think this is also one and yeah it gives us dots then there's i think dash dot which is a combination of dashed and dotted so we can see a dash and then the dot then a dash then a dot, then a dot. okay cool so i think there's one more thing that we can take a look at and that's line width something this controls the line width i believe Hmm. All right, hold on. I could have sworn this is this was a parameter. Maybe it was a line width. Ah, there we go. Okay, let me just tone this up to a very large value just so you can see the effect clearly. There we go. So these contour lines are being drawn a lot thicker than they were normally. I think the default value is 1.5 i think that looks normal yeah i think it's 1.5 so we can reduce this down to like one okay those are some pretty thin lines okay so you can change this value depending on what you need okay and this doesn't work with contour f i'm not sure why some of them are different but yeah wait with contour f is probably different because we don't draw lines in the first place yeah actually that makes sense and with this we're done with our contour plots video i hope you guys enjoyed this content and want to see more in the future because we have a lot more matplotlib content on the way in the next video we're going to be starting off with the various key features inside matplotlib like animation events key bindings uh, updating plots real-time plotting all that kind of cool stuff that you most likely did not know about okay Make making graphs is easy Okay, making plots is easy. It's just a bunch of lines after all. So where's the real complexity? It's in customization and in all those features, okay? Real-time plotting, animation, all that kind of stuff. So that's what we'll be discussing and really be spending a lot of time on, okay? So yeah, subscribe to the channel, leave a like, leave a comment, let me know what you thought of this video, and hopefully I'll get to see you guys in the next one. Later.